Mm -hmm. Did I get the recording? Let me go back to my, all right. All right, there you go. All right, good evening. Good evening, Auntie Mads, Ayina, Kilnestor, Mahal, Papang, and Clifford. And um, again, thank you so much for visiting us, Auntie Mads, Uncle Nestor. It's been a while. <laughs> no, no, you know, it's been a while. The, we we have the um, hiccups for our Bible study, but thank God that for His grace, we continue to keep on keeping on um, to advance into our spiritual advancement in the spiritual maturity. And uh, I would like to welcome again, uh, Auntie Maz, Uncle Nestor, and Ina for our Bible study here. And thank God that we have the Wednesday night now. So <clears throat> I would like to encourage again for all those people who are online and for all those people who's gonna listen to our YouTube channel, um, bear with our uh, YouTube live. I'm still fixing the YouTube live. So I think I'm, gonna, I'm going to try next week. So we have to continue to bear with that one uh, with our recording. And I would like to con um, thank everyone for listening. And I have some views that will continue to keep on to study the Word of God. And this is one of the avenues that you can learn uh, studying the Word of God. And there's so many, there's so many out there. There's so many ways you can learn the Word of God. It's not only here, but I, I'm so thankful. And I'm going to encourage everyone, especially for our young people, to continue. Don't let things to be distracted. Don't let things in the world to be to distract you. Um, make the word of God as your priority in your life, because this is the most important thing um, that we can uh, glorify God through this thing, in spite of what's going on around the world, in spite of what's going on in our lives, in spite of what's going on, you know, uh, our work. That don't let that thing distract in our spiritual advancement uh, tonight we're going to continue with our study once again i uh, would like to um welcome everyone but before we begin with our bible study uh it is essential for every born again believer that you need to be clean before the lord anything you do you need to be clean before the anything you do to the lord you have to be clean using first john 1 9 first john 1 9 it says that if you confess your sins plural he is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you for all unrighteousness. And that the word there, confess, it means homologio. It means that you have to name, to cite your sins, mental, mental attitude sins, your verbal sins, and your action sins. There are three categories of sins. You know, we sin, you know, moment by moment. All you have to do, you have to confess it, name it, because all those sins that you commit, it's already been paid. Now, if you already confess your sins, now you have to, uh, you're already in the fellowship with God. Because every time we commit sins, you are out of the fellowship with God. That's why we are worldly. We are walking in darkness. And that's why you, we have to go back to the Lord. Now, if for those people who are listening, that if you don't have no Christ in your life, all you have to do is faith alone in Christ alone. Because salvation is free. The Bible says, for by grace, through faith, you had been saved. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace, through faith, you had been saved. It's not of your works, but it's Christ's work that matters. With your heads bow and let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for tonight. Thank you, Father, for your grace that you provide for us each and every day in our lives, Father. And thank you for the logistical supply that you provide for us, Father. The air, the oxygen the food that you supplied us each and every day. And the most important thing, Father, that you supply for us is your word. Father, thank you so much, Father, that you continue to provide us your word, 
Bible says, a man shall not live by bread alone, but by the word of God. Thank you so much, Father, that you provide us this word, the most important thing in the world, the richest treasure in the universe is your word, Father. And thank you so much once again tonight. We ask the Holy Spirit to guide us to continue to illuminate our hearts and mind with your with the revealed truth tonight, Father, as we continue to study with your with your word to give us the spiritual advancement. We give you back the glory and honor in Christ's name. We pray. Amen. Amen. Now we go back with our study since we started this, and the title of our study it's the the uh, preparing for the battle, and in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, 10 to 13, the apostle Paul, he introduces the warfare of the believer. Now the book of Ephesians is the book of blessing, the book of blessing, that's the theme. Now every time you, you pick up the Bible and you, when you go to the, you know, when you go to the book, when you go to the book, there's a theme, it runs with the theme. Every time you go, for example, if you go to the book of Romans, it's, you know, it has a theme, which is justification. Um, when you go to the book of Colossians, it has a theme, Galatians, it has a theme. Now in the book of Ephesians, the theme of the book of Ephesians is our blessing in the Lord. That's why when Paul opens open up the book of Ephesians, chapter one, verse three, he says, um, blessed be the God and our Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who blessed us in the heavenlies. In the heavenlies. Now it was divided into three categories. And it the book of Ephesians is divided in three parts. Chapter one, two, and three is we call this the wealth of the believer. The wealth of the believer. This is our wealth. You are so rich in Christ. This is your position. The moment you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you have 51 things. You have the invisible assets in the Lord. You are you are part. You are part now in the union of Christ. You are part in the body of Christ. You are not royal priest, a royal ambassador. You are saved. You are justified, redeemed. All those nine, nine, you know, fifty-one things. The moment you are saved, now you are now seated in the heavenlies in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now Paul, Apostle Paul, he wants you to know that that who you are in Christ. There's so many believers that they don't have no idea who they are in Christ. It's very important who, who are you, who you are in your position in the Lord. Now, through that position, you know that who you are, you are heavenly, you are not citizens in heaven. Now, it goes on to say that this is now who you are in the Lord, you are clean. Now, Paul introduces in chapter 4 that this is now the walk of the believer. Now, you are clean in the Lord. Now, he wants you to walk now, to apply who you are in the Lord. The walk of the believer, and he opens up in the in chapter four, the walk worthy of the calling. You have to walk worthy. The word walking is living. You have to live your life according to who are you in the Lord now, you know. But moment by moment, we committed sin. And the sin, it's already been covered. You know, so many believers that they trip out about their sins. But their sins... The sins that we committed every day, the grace of God covers it all. The grace of God covers your sins from the very beginning. Now, he said, walk worthy of the calling. Now, when he, go, he goes on to chapter 6, he goes on to say that this is not the warfare of the believer. Not only that we have to walk in the newness of life, but you also have a warfare of the believer. That's why Paul, he goes on to say in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, finally. And the word finally, it means from now on in the Greek. It means from now on. Whatever happens in your life in the past, whatever miss we have in the past, but Paul says from now on. Starts today. Whatever miss we have over there in the past, he said from now on, finally, brethren, what did he say? Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Now, to be strengthened in the Lord, we, can be on, we have our strength, but our strength is only finite. We can be strong right now because we are physically, you know, fit. But one day, our body, it will deteriorate. We're not strength enough. We're not strong enough. But to be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might, 
And he goes on to say to put on the full armor of God. The full armor of God. Because every believer we are in the battle, as I introduced this last two weeks ago, we are in a battle. You and me, we are in the battlefield. We are in the midst of this battle. We call this angelic conflict between Satan and God. We are in the midst of this. That's why when, when you ask that question, what, what life is really all about? What is life really all about? And we have that status long, long time ago that what life is really all about Life is about the spiritual battle known is the resolution of the spiritual battle known in the conflict. There's a war that's going on. Now I said, so that put on the full armor of God. God provides us an armor, you know, in, in the military sense, there's always an armor in military. That's why the military, they need to put it on before they go to war. Because if you don't wear your armor when you go to war, what happened to, to the believer? You get wounded by the bullets and all anything that control the Satan can throw to every believer. That's why, as I told last week, there's so many wounded believers. The reason why they are wounded is they're not wearing their armor. They're not wearing their armor. That's why there's so many believers that they are wounded in, in this life. They are disappointed, discouraged, lonely, you know, hopeless, anxiety, stress, because you're not wearing your armor. And the purpose why you have to put your armor on so that you see that word so that you have to put your armor so that you will be able to stand against stand firm. That's the purpose. You have to stand firm against the schemes, the method, the the. The methodoya of the devil, because Satan, he is very, he is very effective. He has his own tactics. You can stand firm against the, the devil. And he goes on to say, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood. See, people is not your problem. As I told that last week, people is not your problem. It's not flesh and blood, but we have this big picture out here, you know, but against the rule for our struggle is not flesh and blood, but against rulers, against powers, against world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. There are four Satan's table of organization. Satan is so well organized with his demons. Remember when Lucifer revolted against God in the book of Isaiah in Ezekiel chapter 28, when God created angel, one of the highest ranking angel is Lucifer. And when Lucifer revolted against God, and in Isaiah's chapter, chapter in, in the book of Isaiah chapter 28, chapter 14, he said, I, I will, I will, I will, and the love. There, he has five I wills. And he, the last I wills with Satan, he said, I will, I want, I want to make myself like the most high God. He wants to be like God. And God threw him down. And when Satan, when God threw Satan out on his abode, he took one third of the angels from God. That's a lot of angels. Now, those angels... Is classified now. There are two categories of angels. We have fallen angels and the elect angels. Those fallen angels as identified now is the demonic angels, the demon angels. So we already studied that one. And we have four, four categories of angels it's right over here from the higher ranking to the private angels. So this is our struggle. This is our fight. Now, Satan attacks individually. Satan attacks human being now in our time back in the old testament satan attacks in two categories this is how satan attacks back in the old testament he attacked them directly satan attacked the lord jesus christ directly satan attacked job directly but in our time satan will attack you in directly how did he attack to your husband to your wife to your pastor to your friend for you to be influenced with the evil principle. Satan will not going to get you right away. He will go down with, you know, he, he's going to go around. 
he knows what where are our weakness. Satan knows where are our weaknesses. He's watching you. He study you. No, that's why in the book of Peter, we have to be sober because Satan, he is like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Now, he said here, therefore, since we have this battle, the angelic conflict, therefore, take up the full armor of God. Now, it's time to pick it up. It's time to pick up your armor now. Take up the full armor of God that you may be able to resist in the evil day. Now, another one, resisting and having done everything, is stand firm. The second word of stand firm. And he goes on to say, stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with truth. Okay, that's number one. And having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Now, Paul, he, he identified every piece of the armor now. We have the belt of truth, the first one. The second one is we have you have to put on the breastplate of righteousness. And having shut your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, you have, you have your boots on. In addition to all, taking up the shield, you need to have the shield of faith. With which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming missiles of the evil one. Satan, Satan is not, you know, when it comes to the angelic conflict, when, it come, when you are a believer, you are subject to Satan. Satan doesn't like us. Satan, Satan doesn't like you, especially if you are a growing believer, because you know why? You will become a threat of Satan. He, he really doesn't like you. He will put you in his first list because he doesn't like anyone who will advance. That's why, like I said last week, the believer who are, you know, not engaging in war, we become what we call a casualty. If you are a comfortable Christian, we become a casualty of war. Now here, Paul, he, he enumerated all the um, pieces of the armors. We have the breastplate of, the breastplate of righteousness. We have the, the, the fit with the preparation of the gospel. We have to put our boots on. We also have, in addition, all taking up the shield of faith with which we, build, we will be able to extinguish all the flaming missiles of the evil one. And another one, take up the helmet of salvation. And the sword of the spirit, that's our offensive, offensive, that's for our offense, is the word of God. With all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the spirit, and with, it, with this in view, be on alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints, for all the saints. Now, Paul, he enumerated everything right here, all the equipments, the full armor of God. And that's the picture that it will show the Roman soldiers. You have to go back again. Where did Paul, when did Paul wrote it down when he was in prison? Paul, he made an, he made an analogy of a Roman soldier that all this piece of, of, of equipment, the piece of the armor, it's just, it's analogous to the believer. So we have all this thing. Now, Paul, he goes on to say, the first, the first piece of the armor is what? The belt of truth. You need to wear that. You need to wear the belt of truth. So we have this, it's like a little, we have a little uh, refresh from last week. Belt of truth. Putting on the belt of truth recognizes that the word of God must be the foundation of life and it's, it has to be put on daily. You need to have the word of God in your life. You need to have that belt. Now in verse 13, Paul reduces the Christian life into one day. The evil day is today. Today is the evil day. As long as we are still here in the surface of the earth, we are subject to sa Satan. Satan's attack. You know, everything in this world, when you look at the news, you know, me and my friend, we were just talking the other day about Turkey and Syria when they have the um, uh, the big earthquake right over there. And they, they, there's so many people died. There's so many people died. Now, you know, and, and one of the questions is why did God allow those things? 
why did God allow those those um, calamities to happen, the tragedy that happens, and and all those people died? God knew in his in his omniscience. God, he is omniscience that those people and and all those people right over there is under judgment. You know, under judgment, because if there's person right over there that who are positive to the word of God, God won't allow him to die. God won't allow him, her to die. Now, many people will ask, how about the babies? Now, if the kids never reach the, the, the age of accountability, they are always saved because God, he is justice. Not only that God is love, God also, he is a justice God. Now, Paul this is the time that we are on right now. Now, how are we going to be able to stand in the evil day? You know, what is the evil day? When everything good lose on you, when everything in our life is just turned upside down, there will be a time in our life that, wow, the problem after problem, adversity, suffering, we all go through to that. And that's why young people, I, I encourage young people, there be there will be one day you might say oh I don't have it right now it's just around the corner you can see the horizon especially on in our time right now not only that we are we are experiencing the the recession in our country the inflation that what's going on that will affect to every believers that will affect in every one of us not only if the great nation the United States of America it's already been upside down. How much more are those little countries like the Philippines? We are affected in every way. Even the egg got affected. Sorry, 32, 37, it went down the other day. So glad. All those prices, it went up. Now, all these problems that we have right now, how are you going to cope up? How are you going to cope up with your problems? You will have one one day. You will face giants in your lives. And how are you going to cope up that one day? It's very simple. That's why God, he said, put the belt of truth first. Now, verse 14, he introduces to gird up your loins with belt of truth. We have belt. Now, that belt that we have, first things that you must keep with you is your, is your belt. Now, many believers, they say, oh, is that going to be my weapon too? Aside from my sword, I'm going to whip all this. No, that's not for the weapon. That's not the weapon. The belt is to hold things together. What does the belt, what belt does is to bring order in your attire. You know, when you go to a party, sometimes you, you have your gown or, or our clothes. It's a little bit loose. To make sure that your attire is intact, you need to have your, your belt. Because truth is where your life holds together. The truth is where your life holds together. If you want to win this battle, you need to put your belt on. The name is truth. You need to have the truth. Because truth conquers all. Truth conquers all. And the biggest question is, what is truth? What is truth? Because truth is all over the place. You know, people are talking about truth, about my truth, their truth, TV, the, the television they're talking about. The world is talking about truth. But the question is, it is the truth, which is from the word of God. My friend says, they're true. This religion, they are true. This denomination, they said that we're the truth. How are you going to identify that this is true? It's because we don't understand about this belt, which is the belt truth. Now, it is very critical to understand this because you know why? If we don't understand this, that's why we start dressing off wrong in our lives. You know, when you see a person don't have no belt and, and, and you know, that's why you know, a lot of young people, they're wearing their pants so saggy and I don't get that. And, uh, you, you know, you have, you, how, how can you fight with that, with a saggy pants? You can never fight that way. You need to make everything in order. If you start out dressing wrong, everything will be out of place. You know, when you start dressing wrong, everything 
is out of place in your life. You need to have the truth. One thing that you never live your life without is, is truth. Don't live life without truth. You need to have the word of God. Because there's so many out there in the world. When you go to Barnes and Nobles, there's so many books out there that will give you the truth. Truth about cooking, engineering, medical, military. You can have all those filled up endeavors that will tell you the truth. But the truth about life is the word of God. Don't live your life without the truth. When you go out there, people are seeking the truth. When you go out to your friends, they're asked you one day, what is the truth? What, how about death? What is about heaven? Is there any life after death? You know, after all this pandemic, I have so many friends that die. I have so many co-workers that pass away. And the sad thing, you know, I learned something about it. What I learned is the hardest thing, I never thought about it, that when you go to your friend, you attend to their funeral, and you know that he, need, he doesn't have no Christ in his life, and you have to tell their family. Either you have to comfort them and telling them that, oh, he's going to hell. You're not going to give them straight that way that, oh, you know, he doesn't have no Christ. He's going to go to hell. In order to comfort them, I struggle on that at one time because I know he never have no Christ. He's not saved. This person that died right now, he, he's not saved. But remember, God gives you a chance while you are still here on earth. That's why. One of the, the principles in the justice of God, he gives you grace first before judgment. God won't allow you to take out your life without hearing the gospel. God gives you the gospel, but the core question is, did you hear that? Many people hear the gospel and you just reject it. But after that, God, that's the reason why when you go to heaven, you won't say, Lord, I never heard anything like that. I never heard about your gospel. I said, how many times I told you? There's no excuse. There's no excuse. See, one thing that I learned that during the pandemic when I uh, attended to my some of my friends' funeral is when you tell them that he, he never had no Christ. And you know exactly when the person, he had, if you don't have no Christ, there's only two destinations in this life. Well, where you spend your eternity, either heaven or hell. <laughs> so people are asking about truth about life. You know, when it comes to relationship, the marriage, the, the, you know, relationship about the government, about this, truth about heaven, earth, angels, salvation. So many, so many questions in life. That's why you don't have to live your life without the word of God. Without the word of God. Now here, our world today is full of opinions, ideas, perceptions that leaves you guessing. What true yesterday is not true today. For example, you know, some research says coffee is bad for you. The next day, another research says, no, it's not bad at all. You know, have you, have you, have you noticed something about that? When it comes to medical, to the medicine, um, some people say the MSG is bad. And some research say, no, MSG is good for our food. You get confused. People are so confused because you know why? We don't have the truth. Now, what is truth? Truth is an objective standard by which reality is measured. The truth, the word of God, is the standard by which reality is measured. This is where you go. This is where the people, where is the believer always go when it comes to the questions in life. I bet so many people have opinions. I bet so many people, they have ideas. For example, I have my friend, they're homosexual. In fact, God is having a problem right now for, you know, when they have their, um, uh, the wedding. But, you know, you just have to stick what you, what you have learned. What the truth of the Bible says. I have my friend, my coworker, in fact, asked me about 
what do you think about homosexuality? I said, what about it? You know, I said, what do you think about that? Now, I told them that what I think is doesn't matter. What God thinks that matter, that homosexuality is sin. What he thinks, that's all that matters. Because, I, you know, I, I just get my thinking from the word of God. I just have my friend. They just got married too the other day. But say, you know, you have to tell the world about it. You have to tell the world about the truth. So it's an objective standard. What is really the right thing? What is the right way? Because this is very important. Because the world is conforming to bad. The world is changing. But I want you to change. God wants us to change. So this truth is not predicated and foremost on how you feel. It's not based on how you feel. It's not based on emotion. Because Christian way of life is a life of thinking. Christian way of life is a life of thinking. About to determine whether it's true. Truth is an objective standard by which reality is measured. It is a fixed standard. That's why the word canon is a ruler. The word canon, canonicity of the word of God is a ruler. That's why you have the ruler. It means that's the rule that you have to live by. This is the rule. There's so many rules out there. I, I bet there's so many people though who are. Um, they are moral and they have people, they have their own standards in life. But what's really standard that God gave to each one of us? We have the word of God, which is our basic standard. Now, truth is all everything that we must conform. And re uh, truth is reality and, the, and its original norm. And truth is real because it is real originally. It comes from God. The word of God, it comes from God. It's part of God's character. God has 10 characteristics. And one of that characteristic of God, he is veracity. He is truth. The word veracity is God. He is truth. Now, so to discover the truth, you have to look for origin, original. Since God is the originator for all origin, only God can be the fixed his standard of what is truth because he is the original. He is the origin of it. Now, if you if you seek for the truth, that's why the Bible always says you have to seek, not look, listen to the truth. That's what we do. You know, before we, we know the Lord, we are confused. And that's why Jesus Christ, he said, I am the way, not that way the truth and the life because people people are very confused we are so confused who is the truth that's why jesus christ he narrowed the road he narrowed everything that i am the way with the definite pronoun the way the truth and the life now if you're not gonna take that way your status is you still lost and if you take that way, it will lead you to the truth, the truth that will give you, you know, it will lead you to life. When you know about the word of God, it will give your life a high definition, purpose and meaning of your life. And then now, since God is the originator, since God is perfect, it is absolutely critical that he is the point of reference. This, this is very important. That whatever you ask question, everything is right over here. There's so many people out there that they can, they can have their idea, research and everything, even the science. But the point of contact that we point of our reference questions is right over here. Now, it's very important to put on the belt of truth because you know why here we have the example last week that when people in England, you will see people in England, when they walk around, they look at their, their watch and they look at Big Ben. You see that Big Ben, the big watch in England? That's where they refer if their watch is right. Their watch is right. If their watch is wrong because they're looking up Big Ben, the Big Ben is God. Big Ben doesn't care about what time do you have. 
as long as your watts is the same as Big Ben. Big Ben doesn't conform on your watts because he is the standard in England. You, whether you conform to Big Ben or your watts is wrong. That's why whether we have our, 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 our ideas, we have our belief system. Now, when you don't go to the word of God, you have to refer to the word of God. That's why we can have the truth. We have to have our reference all the time to the word of God. Because you know why? He said here, when you disagree with the truth, you are wrong all the time. He says, you must have the mindset that operates with truth. You have your mindset. The Bible always talk about have your mind, you know, in Christ. What would it be? The final standard, what would it be? What would be your final standard? Would that be your emotion? Because people, they go with their emotion. Emotions sometimes overpower our thinking. That's why we call, we call that the, the emotional revolt of the soul. That we make decisions based on our emotion. Instead, we have to make decisions based on, on what we learn. Emotions, sometimes we overshadowed our, you know, there's so many emotions. We have good emotion and we have bad emotion. Bad emotion, if we are in a bad emotion, we are lonely, sad, disappointed, discouraged. We are anxious. We make decisions based on that emotion in life. Now, but you know what? There's also a happiness, joy, the good emotion, the positive emotion. No, the problem what is because feelings change. That's why you don't have to base your standard on feelings because feelings, it will change. Today you're happy, the next day you're sad. You know, every moment, some people, they call it bipolar. And you cannot use the feelings as a measurement of truth. You cannot use your feelings as a measurement of truth because life, that's why Christian way of life is a life of thinking and thinking the word of God. What God says about this moment, what God says about this, you know, adversities I face right now. I have, you know, I have broken relationship. My friend, I got mad. I, you know, I'm angry. I'm jealous. All these things. Should I do this? Should I respond or should I react about this adversity? And the truth of the Bible will tell you that. That you need to respond it with truth. Every life situation is where you have to respond that with the truth. Feelings are real because that's part in our soul. Now, our soul, it has five faculties. That's the real you. Our body is just a container where, where, where God can put your soul. Our soul, it has five faculties. We have mentality. We have consciousness. We have self, you know. Uh, self-consciousness, we have conscience, and we have our emotion. Uh, let me go back on that one. We have volition, mentality, we have self-consciousness, conscience, and emotion. That's the real you. That's your characteristic as a person. And part of that mentality is your mind. That's your mind. That's why no matter how smart we are, you are still finite. You're limited. Man is limited. We are limited in our thinking. That's why when God says, do not lean in your own understanding. Do, do not lean with your own understanding. You need to have the word of God. Because in your brilliance, you are smartly limited. You are limited. And that's why it, you have limitation. We have limitations in our life. That's why with the new information, we get surprised. I say, oh, wow, I didn't know that, you know. Sometimes we are very surprised that, you know, the technology, because our mind is progressively increasing in our thinking, in our learning. Now, God is the only one that has all the information. God is the only one that has all the information. So we are the, we have, we have the finite mind in our mind, what we will use, because we don't have no God at the very beginning, we use our instinct. Should it do this or not? Or sometimes we use our common sense. And sometimes it's not common nowadays anymore. <laughs> you know, 
People, they don't even have no common sense nowadays. It's, it's rarely. Everybody has different opinion about right and wrong or good and bad. Now, we must have to make a de de definitive statement about truth even when we don't like it. You see that? We must make a definitive statement about truth even when we don't like it. That's why I told my friend, truth hurts, but truth will set you free. I have one of my friends, you know, I asked him last, last November, and that was Thanksgiving. I, I, I asked him, Kuya, how are you? And uh, he said, no, oh, I'm good. What are you going to cook on Thanksgiving? I said, no, just not, not that much. And he said, oh, I have the, um, the pork over there. But he said, but well, what happened? I went to my doctor and he told me that my cholesterol is, is, is high. And I said, oh, so why are you cooking pork? I said, nah, I'm not fooling with her. What you gonna do? And he told me that I'm gonna change my doctor. <laughs> I was laughing. That's the solution that he made. I'm gonna change my doctor. This is the same thing to, to the believer. If you don't hear the truth, the doctor gives you the, the reality that your, 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 your cholesterol is high. He said, no, I'm going to change her. I was shocked when he said that. I said, no way. Isn't that the same thing he's going to tell you again? I said, but I'm just going to change my doctor. But that's what we do in the Christian life. People, when they hear the truth, they switch church. This with friends, this with, you know, partners, this with everything because they don't want to be uh, accompanied with the truth. Because the truth, remember, the truth will expose you. The truth will expose you. And that's why so many people, they like to live in little, little darkness, in this shade of darkness. Because you know why? I don't want to the light to see me. They want to stay there in that little darkness that they call because they don't want to see the light. Even if you don't like it. I have so many friends. When I tell them that the, the truth, they're out. Because I'm not going to compromise my belief. I'm not going to compromise the truth for you. So many pastors that they compromise a lot. They choose their congregation instead of the truth. They choose their friend instead of the truth. You know, friends is friends. Family is family. That's why God, he said, I came to divide the house. When he, when he said that I came to divide the house, because there's, there will be part of your family that they, they, they are negative to the truth. There will be part of your family that they are positive to the truth. That's why it's very important that you have to stand with the truth. Even in our government, even in our country today, the reason why God is about to judge our country, because the truth is watering down. We switch, we switch everything because we don't like to hear the truth. And that's the fact. Truth hurts, but the truth will set you free. And we're going to continue this next week. And I, I you know, um, I love to, to this, is, this is my passion. That's why every time that people come to me, I give them right away, what do they need? And um, I, was, I would thank to some of our brothers and sisters in the Philippines, in, in Hawaii, some of our friends in Canada and over here in Las Vegas, you know, I know people are so busy over here. And that's why I just tell them that we have the avenue. If you need the truth, you can come over here and, and dine with us, okay? With your heads bow and let's pray together. Gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Father, for the truth that Paul listed in the book of Ephesians chapter six, Father. We thank you so much for who and what you are, Father. 
Thank you for loving us and thank you for guiding us and thank you for, for protecting us, Father. And for all those people who's gonna listen to the to the channel, Father, bless them, O Lord. And especially for our loved ones back home in the Philippines, in Hawaii, here in uh, here in the in, in Las Vegas, Father, bless them, O Lord. Uh protect my family, our family, loved ones and friend, Father, and, and especially for our country. Thank you for our job, Father. Thank you for our financial, uh, our health, uh, your protection for each one of us, Father. It, it's so dangerous out there. It's so dangerous, Father. Uh, without your protection, we, we we're gonna go anywhere. And bless the military men and women who fight for the freedom in this country, Father. Bless them, O oh Lord. We know what's going on around the world. Everybody is preparing. And this is going to be heading for in the time of the end of the human history, Father, that China is preparing, Ukraine, Russia, all those things, Father. But there's nothing, there's nothing more because you know why? We always have our protection. It's in the Lord. Thank you so much, Father, for this moment. Once again, guide us with your Holy Spirit and protect us, Father, each and every day. Thank you for your grace. And we give you back the glory and honor. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you. Let me. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Auntie Mats. Let me just. Uh huh. Let me. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you can go.